Hey guys! How are you? Pac Man on the street. Pac oh, the Pac Man. There's a Pac Man game out there. Yeah, I know, I just saw it. Talk to her. Bonjour! Hello. 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 How is everyone? Perfect. This is the best looking press conference I've ever seen. Welcome to Belgium. Welcome to Belgium. Everyone's awesome. Hi. Hello. 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 Uh, a question for all of us. Uh, what does this kind of convention mean to you? Well, I think conventions in general are a fantastic opportunity for us to connect with the fans, get feedback, and to see the kind of um, passion that they have for the show. You know, me personally, I come from a theater background, and we get that immediate audience response. Whereas in TV, we film it and move on. And so we don't really have that interaction with the fans. So this is a great opportunity for us to get back and also to meet them and, and see what they think about the show. I agree. That's yeah. exactly it. I mean, look, <clears throat> you know, social media and, and it, it becomes very convoluted. Like he talked about when you do theater, you get that immediate response. We have a sort of a response, but it's masked on these things, which it's not necessarily a true feeling. You don't actually get a real response. The human interaction that you don't get from here, you get from meeting thousands of people at one time. And it's a very positive thing to actually experience that. So we're grateful to, uh, to KLZ for bringing us here yes. to make sure this happen. Yes, Thank you it's, my, it's, it's my second year. Is it your second year here, or third year, fourth year? Uh, third. Third. It's my second year here, and, and for us, it's also a great way to give back. I mean, Brussels has been so supportive of the Vampire Diaries from day one, and it's a great way for us to spend time with the fans and interact with them, and and talk to the to the press here, and and give back to you guys who consistently throughout the years have been so supportive of us. Yeah, absolutely, Daniel. <clears throat> I mean, I don't know what to add to that. <laughs> It was so eloquently put. But yeah, it's, it's, it's lovely. It's weird. It's, you know, like, you almost feel like a band sometimes when you're in a, because we, we lock ourselves away and do the show for as long as we do, and then we get these hiatuses, and, and you sort of, it touring. feels like you're sort of touring a little bit. You yeah. Know, it's it's We're really fun. And it's, it's, it feels so nice to be able to sort of say thank you um, personally. And, and we're very deeply grateful to the people who are accommodating us here. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we actually have the band, so. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah brought, really? brought the guitar, so we'll Honestly, see. We they lost his really luggage. Good. He has no clean underwear, but, but he has his guitar. <laughs> yeah. So I, have I have a baby tailor in my room. Do. Yeah, it doesn't have a pickup in it, though. We should jam. Wait, are you free balling? No. Actually, no, I did wa I washed did my what? socks. Yeah, so they lost my luggage, and I washed my socks and underwear in the shower last night. Oh, perfect. I'm going to have to dry. Oh, good. So they're rel relatively so many, clean. So they're relatively, so relatively clean. clean. But are they dry? They were dry, right? They were dry, you know, air dried and then blow dried. But to, to get back to the question at hand, I wanted to add something real fast, rather than being on me. What I wanted to say real quick, because Michael, you kind of said it, what I love about seeing all the fans at the conventions is seeing how we have affected them in that way, like how they've been affected and moved by our performance, mm -hmm. and what they, almost to a point of like what you do with your you know, the foundation, mm -hmm. is how you move people to action, right. how you move someone to want to make a change and do something, make a difference. That's awesome. And I get so excited when I get to see people moved you, know, you change their lives in a way. That's what well, I get excited about. Thanks, man. Thanks for bringing that yeah. and adding that. Because basically, they had to bring these guys in because we as the actors bore the shit out of the fans. <laughs> so they brought in the band to give them some some, some solid movement. Yeah, totally. Thanks, brother. Okay, uh, please. Please questions. If you would stand up. Thank you. Please. Um, second question. <laughs> What? If you, if you had to choose, <laughs> you, if you had to choose, would you would you be in real life a human or a vampire? Um, I'd probably stay human, or maybe I would just stay a vampire for a little while, and I would use that um, that amazing thing that we can do, where 
I can look at you and make you do whatever I want. I don't think you need to be a vampire to do that. I think you, 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 you can kind of do that anyway, man. <laughs> no, that would, it would be amazing, because then I would go to Washington, or I'd come to Brussels, and I would talk some sense into our politicians and our corporate leaders and make them do the right thing. And then once I was tired of being a vampire, I would probably get, like, an 80-year-old bottle of, like, Barbados rum and then go sit on a beach and then take my ring off and then just <laughs> <laughs> leave the world a better place, get it done. But uh, I just don't like killing people anymore. It's just it's illegal. Okay. Uh, for which one of you? Which one of you? Um, which character could you choose if you weren't your real one in the series? For the original for the Vampire Diaries. I, it's so, you know, I don't even, I can't even imagine playing mm -hmm. another character. I think that everyone has done such a good job and they've made it their own so much that even I can't see, as cocky as I can't see anyone else playing Bonnie Bennett. <laughs> I could play yeah. Bonnie. You could maybe play Bonnie. I could be a good Bonnie. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I think I play a very good Bonnie. I, as well, I'm just thinking. Okay, so I've got now competition. All, I think I'd be amazing. Everyone wants to be Bonnie. But I mean, I mean, literally, yeah. I mean, you can't even imagine anyone else other than Ian playing Damon or anyone else other than yeah. Malarkey playing Kenza. It's just like, you just, it, it's just, they're so good. The character's brought so much, so many different colors to the characters. I just, I don't know, personally, I, I can't. I would have played, I would have played the crow, and then I would have flown out <laughs> of the crow. I right. thought you told Brandon Lee's The Crow. No, 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 no. I was, I I was playing The Crow in the season one. That that yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. they were making that. Yeah. I would have played The Crow that Damon ate. Um, and then just flown out of Mystic Falls. You know, I mean, you know, this... We miss Elijah. You know, Julie yeah, had to go create this other Ooh. stupid show. <laughs> called the originals, <laughs> and we lost all of our I, uh, great actors with yeah. the great accents. We have uh, no accents now. We have no accents. Oh, hey. 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 So much I was just waiting for him to say. Oh, wait, yeah. You, you know what? We've got one. Yeah. Oh, We've got one. Nice. We're holding on to him for dear life. This is, the, this is the, the, the new character that adds so much to this show, um, and I hope that we get to get our uh, Enzo Damon thing back on. We've missed working with each other Denzo? last season. We had like two seasons <laughs> together, so. I'll ship that. Well, we had a couple days together. Yeah. A couple episodes together. But, uh, whoa, the Parisian Prowler? Yeah, man. You, you had this, but like. I love that. Yeah. Well, we were just in Paris, so I thought I'd do some, some reading. <laughs> yeah, I, this is, um, I'm grateful that we all get to play these characters. And when we definitely do miss Elijah. Whenever Paul and I talk about characters, um, you're also the character that we'd also all hook up with. Really? I think every yeah. I think was the boys hot. have bigger crushes on Daniel Gillies. You always say that. <laughs> I do always say it's true. There's there's some female. <laughs> no, you have you have <laughs> female, but everyone like he's just a man's man, and I. It's, a man's man. You are. Totally. I just like those. Big dog. Everyone loves Daniel Gillies. That's not. Next question. Next yeah, question. Let's <laughs> okay, uh, can I ask a question to everybody? Um, what if you is dare, <laughs> go for it. If you can. <laughs> is it difficult for uh, a good actor to play a bad guy, like a vampire? Or well, first of all, there are no good actors on the show. Not a, not a one. So <laughs> that's your first mistake. That possibility. That's, so you might want to rephrase first, that. That's the first mistake. <laughs> right. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> good actors think they're bad, bad actors think Yeah, because good. most of you, okay, maybe except for Bonnie, but uh, most of you play characters that are at times very bad. <laughs> yeah. So is it, is it difficult for a, an actor who is that good to, to play a bad guy? It's more fun to play the, the bad guy. It's just more fun. You know, we, for some reason, we as humans love the bad boy, you know. Um, it, it was, even Paul, Paul loves playing the Ripper as opposed mm. to the good guy. Damon, you know, I kicked and screamed when I found out that Damon was in love with, um, shit, Rose. Rose. I kicked and I remember calling Julie and Kevin, literally almost in tears, like, why? <laughs> why? And they said, because 
you can't be a one trick pony. This is the, this is a hundred and fifty episode arc of some man. Uh, you can't just always be the bad guy. I think also the thing is, you know, as as actors, it's our obligation to humanize bad guys. You know, and as an actor, I don't feel like there's any like. Well, there's some truly evil characters, but even somebody like Richard the Third. He had his motivations for doing what he was doing. And what's interesting for us as actors is to justify those choices and make them good. And not judge that no. character. And you can't you judge Never character. judge a character. You know, he made a good point. Justifying those characters is actually quite an interesting thought because ultimately what you're doing is, and, and uh, Ivana Chubbuck and I figured this out with Damon. She actually coined the phrase, but <clears throat> Damon was a character like Enzo, like anyone, even Elijah, even, even Bonnie. But this guy, in particularly, for me, Damon had ill intentions, but for righteous reasons. And those are actually the most dangerous people. Look at, look at the world right now that we live in. Look at the Middle East. Look at Syria. Look at what's happening in Europe. Look what's happening in America. Fundamentalism is ultimately people who are justified in their actions. They have ill intent, but it's for righteous reasons. So how do you argue with them? And... Uh, <coughs> Ooh, up to show. Mm. Ooh. I'm not that on what you just said because I, I have something that just popped in my mind. No, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Ecstasy. Yeah, go I would it. actually. I'll take that guy. Ecstasy? Oh, good. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Also, as, as as actors, you know, I think uh, we enjoy getting to pretend to be what we're actually not. Like I was. I'm pretty familiar with most of you. I, I just met Cat. No, I don't so I don't know if you actually are an evil person. I don't think so. Ask me later. Ask me later. <laughs> you know, we, we, we love getting to be that which we don't actually we which we actually are not in real life. Playing the bad guy is somebody that, you know, most of us if we're raised well and have great morals, we're not gonna be in real life. No. And even aside from that, you know, you were talking even as characters my my character in the original is Oliver. I mean I I literally killed the mother of yeah our pack. <laughs> but his reasons were always justified. He thought he was doing the right thing. Yeah. They always thought he was doing the right thing. And then eventually down the line he came to the righteous path, you know, and basically sacrificed himself for that. But yeah, that's that's what I was gonna say, you know, that uh, as actors I think it's the most enjoyment getting to be what we're not, the opposite. And the bad guy most of the time tends to be what that is, hopefully. I don't know about you, Kat. Um, Daniel, you had that too. Man, uh, body definitely has I mean yeah, I think, well, Ian and I work the same way. We work with Ivana Chubbuck, and it's all about what Ian said. It's like you have to have a justification of the behavior for the character. And as much as it is fun to play someone outside of yourself, I think it's more of a challenge and actually more rewarding when you play someone inside, inside yourself. Inside of yourself. Um, it's all I mean, that shit you build up and yeah, you stir up you from have the to, past. Yeah, you have to be... Or even from the present, you know, uh, art imitates life, and I think present the scenes present. that, yeah, I think that the, the scenes that have really connected to people, especially this season, especially the stuff that Damon, uh, that Ian and I have done together, have been, um, especially with Bonnie, she does things because she believes they're the right things to do, and I think he, um, Damon does too because he, he was in love with Elena and did whatever he could to protect her, but um, both of them kind of, I mean, we we had literally a couple like. Uh, fight scenes. Meltdowns? Meltdowns, <laughs> and I literally have, uh, the characters literally cut him open, yeah. and, you know, um, and tortured him just because, you know, she felt betrayed, she felt alone, and all that has to come through in the art, or else, mm -hmm. you know, a bad guy is just a bad guy, and you forget about it, and you don't, you don't root for him, but people root for Damon Salvatore, and he's the, you know, the the biggest badass in Mystic Falls, you know what I mean? It's like, but you root for him because of what Ian has brought to the character. Well, not until you... Elijah or Enzo <laughs> oh, takes close. the shit out of you. You know, right. it's actually really interesting. I remember, I remember actually, it's two-parter actually, when these two guys came into our show, when Elijah came, I remember in season two there was a scene Three or two. It was one, two, yeah. two. We're we're in this cafe, mm -hmm. and Elijah's standing outside, and he has a handful of quarters. Oh yes. And he throws them in, and he shatters and explodes this giant window, and it's mayhem inside of there. <clears throat> and I remember watching that performance and looking at how the storyline was going. And the cool thing about it was, this guy was so justified in his actions, 
And mm -hmm. I was thinking, I would have done the same thing. I mean, as a character. Mm -hmm. Enzo, same thing, you know, sent what seems like senseless, merciless killing. You know, it's an interesting study in humanity, actually, mm -hmm. we see these characters. And I'm not trying to be too cerebral. At the end of the day, this is a teen vampire soap opera. I get it. <laughs> but this man, who had just been tortured and had nothing left, and felt abandoned by everything and everyone except this one guy, Damon, there's a lot riding on that. And I see that in our audience sometimes, mm -hmm. in fans, when... I was just in Paris, and I actually need to send out uh, a tweet saying, I'm really sorry. You know, <clears throat> there are people that wait outside the hotel, or when, or when you're walking down the streets, people want to take a picture with you, and it's a... Glad you're addressing this. The thing is, it's like, hey guys, I love you guys, but if I take one picture with you, then it's going to be the next 45 minutes of my life. Everyone from the streets, then it becomes unsafe. And it and holds I'm here. up you guys, it holds up other fans and that might have had to travel to get to the conventions, to get to other places. So I just say, hey guys, I love you guys. I love all of you. Thank you. Just let me go be a person today. But they get so angry. They get upset. And but this is sometimes after he's been out there, or I've been out there, all morning taking photos with every single person, but it'll be that one person that didn't get the photo, and it's social media, and then it just creates this like rampant thing. Right, but the reality of it is, and we've talked about this a million times, is, is that I always want to be sensitive to that because you never know someone's story. Yeah, you know. You know, I have, I have young kids that come up to me and they say, you know what, <clears throat> my mom just died of cancer, but the last four years, my, all my mom and I did was bond watching Vampire Diaries. And so their, the bond that they have with this story is far deeper and greater than I could ever even imagine. So I want to be sensitive to that and understand it. So yeah. you feel I, so bad at the end of the day I when know. you see people crying because you know. didn't get a photo. <clears throat> but I also want to say this, in you and I's defense, and really the cast defense, we're not here to just we're working on some film. We're literally here to meet the fans. Right. We are making ourselves accessible to you. So come to the conventions and meet us. Outside of the hotel room, is it's it's a lot to ask and almost creepy. not creepy. It's well, it's listen, just impossible. It's impossible. It's, we are on yeah. a schedule to meet the fans, but we are on a strict schedule to meet fans that have done whatever they had to do to get their asses there, to take <laughs> photos, to meet with us. So don't bitch about it online. If you don't get a photo outside the hotel room, drive up the street and come sit with us because we are here for you. That's why we're here, to meet you. So just make it a little bit easier for us. I just need to say that because I know what you're talking about. I no, get it too. It, we all get it, but we're here to do conventions. Brussels, Paris, where else is KLZ? Barcelona. Come there. That's where we are. You can find us. We're right there. We're waiting for you. I just need to say that because I get it too. President. I'm yeah, just saying. Know. I'm just saying. Like that's no, why we're it, here. It just what happens is is social media. You know, we you want to spread good energy on this thing, and I just want people to be happy, and I want mm -hmm. them to feel fulfilled, and I want them to get the experience they want, but also too just recognize that there are boundaries. There are the people are just people. So when they're walking in the street, you can't grab them. You can't <laughs> cry at them because they're just trying to have a day. You can't. No. It makes the experience dirty and yucky. So just have an interaction. Say hello. You're right. But just... <laughs> Cat Grant was right. I'm just saying, just do it. Do well, you know, it wasn't as bad before social media. You know, people had their cameras, they wanted to take a picture. It was for them. Whereas now, it's it's not just for them. They want to share it. it with right. I did this, you know, yeah, and yeah. I think that's part of the issue. It becomes a very, it becomes a frenzy, you know, a feeding frenzy <clears throat> type thing. But anyway. Yeah, no, it's just food for it's, thought. It's interesting. I mean, these things, these things change the world. Um, these things change the world. I remember, remember, dude, when you first got the set, it was literally day one. Dan, you know, Daniel and I did a movie together eons ago. It was actually a really beautiful film. Incredible performance by you, brother. We literally bonded. We lived in a, in a bed and breakfast together with Scott Wilson and 
David Strathair, and it was right when David was, David was being nominated for an Oscar at the time, and we had a really incredible experience. And then, geez Louise, I don't even know, three years later, we show up and he's on, this, on set, and I said, I'm so happy you're here, man, because I know how talented he is, and I knew it was going to bring a lot. And he goes, so this thing is, this show's doing, this thing is doing pretty well, it's crazy. And I said, just wait, man. Just wait till that first episode comes out, and then the second episode comes out. Your character, I said, just wait. Social media, and media in general, is going to blow up, and it's going to be expedient, and it's going to be exponential. And he goes, yeah, yeah, no, I'm sure, I'm sure. And then about <laughs> six months later, Daniel and I are sitting, and he goes, you were right. This is crazy. I mean, this is... But it's that, it's the beautiful thing about the social media sphere. But it's also something that I just want to start gearing up young people to just have some respect for us and recognize that we do love you. Yes. And we are literally here for you. But it's just, the boundaries are starting to blur a little bit. Um, right. And just practice social, you know, conscious behavior online. You don't want to be a bully. You don't want to be bullied. Don't bully us. Yeah. You know, if you know, just just practice. If you know that you know an artist is a certain way, or you know that they're there to you know, just be supportive of other artists. You know, just practice conscious behavior online. And we aren't actually our characters. We are. By the way, we aren't actually vampires. You know. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, you know what I mean, though. No. Yeah. Some people, they, they and, it's, and they're young, and no. I understand honestly, that. But, honestly, you know. a lot of people really hated me until they actually got to meet me. Same with me. Same with me. I think you're an asshole. But, <laughs> well, uh, except for you, but and Daniel, maybe too. I know yeah, I'm glad you very little point. changes before yeah, and after. They don't like me before and after. There's no transition for me. It's yeah, but you guys are really hot, so it's it a, makes up for a lot of you know. No, it's charming too. So clever. It really has been the most incredible. Uh, journey and because of the love it, we have become um, substantial influencers in the world and that's what I'm so thankful for is the ability to actually speak to people and empower them to do more I love that um, but I just wanted to say that we are all in our own right so thankful for the amount of love that we get from you the media Translating that to the Super audience. Hot media in Belgium. I know. <laughs> Belgium wins the award. The Belgian women. Media, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We should it's be taking photos of you guys. <laughs> yes. It's also Europe. I start Everyone. taking out my phone. It's also yeah. Europe. Yeah. Everyone's so much more stylish. Oh but yeah, women in Europe. Men in Europe also. Uh, so who else? <laughs> yeah, it's true. Men who else? Oh, wait, really yeah, quickly. Go, go, go. Oh, fine. Right, you don't want to ask this question. Okay. Just one, yes? Yeah, last question. Very quick. Okay. Uh, you were talking about fun. What is the most surprising or the most touching gift to get from a fan? The story. The stories. I. Mm -hmm. I actually, am, actually, I need to send this out. I, I'm going to beg people not to bring gifts. I'd rather just make a tiny donation to ESF because the gifts. I love sorting through them, but it's also a lot of waste. I, right. It's a lot of paper, it's a lot of plastic, and then I travel a lot, so I necessarily can't take things all the time. Right. No more chocolates for me. No, we don't need chocolates. Yeah, no I'm, more chocolates. I'm expanding I, I, by the I, I, hour. I want chocolate. Just no more chocolates. I will I want say chocolate. this on record, though. I'm Belgium super into chocolate. crystals. <laughs> so if you want to get me anything, get me some crystals for my crystal collection. Other than that, please, no more chocolate, for God's sake. Ian, you made me think of something I had to say real fast. I've just recently started organizing a group and um, organizing a nonprofit and working for a, a charity which was anti-bullying and that was my choice and which is very inspiration inspired by you thank you man and so something I never realized I mean I knew I was doing it because you know I feel like everyone's been bullied at least once in their life and we're all affected by it and I and I'm kind of blown away by what I've uncovered by some of these people that are coming forth and sharing these stories, stories. and yeah, I'm getting emotional thinking about it because I never, I never imagined it would be this, this impacting mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. like I knew I would get the, the, the feeling of this feels good, like we're doing something right. But damn, I'm, real, I'm getting people coming out of the woodwork being like, yeah. you know, I, I, this really hits home with me, and they give me right. a story, and I'm like, it's stories. Oh that's, that's amazing. Yeah, and so totally. Those are the things. I mean, you know, 
I, initially, and we talked about this way early in the Vampire Diaries, this show created, I guess what we can call a parental loophole. It filled a loophole, which is kids don't talk to their parents anymore. They don't. And then there's no social references anymore because the leaders come and go. It's like the boy bands and the Britney Spears of the world are all now so churned out. There's 900 channels on television. There's five huge or six huge platforms of social media. Kids, it's like candle in the wind. It's all so fast, and who do I glab onto? And but it's the story. It's the story of the young person mm -hmm. who went through cancer with their mom or dad, yeah. or went through a time of bullying, and their mother and their father or them got to bond watching this show. Right. So it's not just a right. silly television show. It's actually a moment for right. young people to bond with their parents. Right. Well, throughout all the ages, we've relied on on drama and the tradition of storytelling. And this is just the current form of that. You know, mythology is what we have as a people for our culture, every, every single country in the world. And without that, there's nothing, there's, there's no history. And it may seem silly, like, you know, it's a soap, it's a vampire show, but at the moment, <coughs> that's our modern day mythology. The, right. These are stories that are mirroring what people are experiencing in their own life. And have been going through since the beginning of time. And yeah. if you want exactly. to go back to your question about like the, a specific thing that a fan has done, I was at Comic-Con this past year, and one of the heads of the CW said, there's somebody I want you to meet. I'm going to wait till the rest of the autographs are finished. I want you to meet her. And I'm like, OK, it's fine. It's just you know, someone's kid. I don't know. He brings up this little fan. She had to have been about maybe 10 or 11. And she looks at me, and she starts crying. And she's like, I just want to say thank you, because I, for the first time, I watched TV, and I saw someone that looked like me. So for me, that's why it's also for I'm, you know, I'm an African American on a, on television, and it's extremely important that I am socially conscious. So it's important for Ian to be socially conscious. You're in a position of power, whether it's a vampire show, whether it's a <coughs> CNN thing, whatever. You have the attention of the youth, of people that are going to be running this country, that are going to be running the world. What do you do with it? So when you hear those stories, it propels you to, one, create really good work so they can stay connected to you emotionally, stay connected to your character, invest in who you are as a person. Yeah, it and then inspires outside us of that, as well. Is, yeah, to keep going. You know, because sometimes even as an actor, just as everyone else's jobs sometimes feel unfulfilling, everyone else's jobs also feel unfulfilling. There are moments as actors where you're like, Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Am I making the right moves? Am I, is this worth it? Is this extra audition worth it? Are these 20 pages I have to memorize for something that's just gonna go on tape and maybe get lost forever? Is it worth it? And you see those stories and you're like, okay, yeah, it's so worth true. it. When you meet these fans and you, they tell you what Very you lovely. mean to them, yeah. it's worth it. That's what makes it worth it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll just do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, you have 10 kids, you have to. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta do something about it. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like Marlon Brando. I'm, I'm, I'm cut off. I'm cut off. No more kids. Hey, you know what I mean? <laughs> no more legitimate ones, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> great, great. Thank you so much. On that note, hey guys, thank, thank you. you. Thank that you. was a great ending. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for all the love and thank you. and uh, and and. Thank you for coming by the way, today. you, the media, are who get. This yes. information out to people. You guys so are very you. powerful. So. Thank you for the support and love. Thank you. Truly. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you.